Hi, my name is Skylar Church. I am a California real estate broker as well as a member of the education department at accredited real estate schools. We offer the course requirements to be eligible to take the state exam in California, but also varying levels of preparation to help that you make sure you're prepared to pass that state test. So if you haven't done the courses um, previously, uh, make sure to check out our website because we do offer those courses. But if you have also completed the courses and you're just looking for state exam prep, we also have that as well. So um, if you're interested in, I have the website listed below. But if you like these videos, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment so we keep producing new content and material on our YouTube channel. And we're going to today go through some practice questions to help you prepare for the state exam. So just a few of them and hopefully see how well you're doing with the material. So let's get to it. Question number one, a seller issues a counter offer and the offeree rejects it. What can the seller do? A, accept the original contract on terms. B, sue for specific performance. C, file an interpleader action. D, do nothing. Well, a seller is issuing a counter offer. So the seller is now becoming the offeror and the buyer is receiving that counter offer and they're called the offeree. Because of that, the offeree, the buyer, has the ability to reject it. And the seller, when they submitted that counter offer, they knew they were taking a risk on the fact that they did not know um, if the buyer would actually be willing to proceed with that counter or try to meet them in the middle. So at that point, the seller uh, terminated the original um, or basically them countering the offer, doing a counter offer, terminated that original offer that was submitted by the buyer. So now the seller cannot go back and try to accept the original um, the original offer. They sent a counter offer, which is a new offer. Now the buyer rejected it. So at this point, the seller could try to send a new offer to the buyer to see if they can find a happy medium, but there's really not much they can do at that point. So um, because of that, the best answer is D, do nothing. Do nothing. They can't go back and accept the original contract on terms. They uh, if they rejected the original offer by sending a counter offer. They can't sue for specific performance because there wasn't a contract. A file interpleader action, no, that would be if they were actually an escrow and somebody breached the contract. So, nope, uh, the best answer is D, do nothing. Two, the following are essential, um, essential to the creation of an agency relationship, except a, parties who are competent, B, an agreement to pay consideration, C, an agreement between principal and agent, D, a fiduciary relationship. So what is essential to the creation of an agency relationship? Well, we know that you have to be competent, you have to be capable. It has to be between the principal and the agent. There has to be that agreement between them. And with that agency relationship, there's a fiduciary duty obligation that has been created. So with that, we then know that the parties who are competent, an agreement between principal and agent, as well as fiduciary relationship are all correct. Does an agency relationship require consideration though? What is consideration? Remember that something of value, the bargained for exchange, it could be money, it could be a, a note, it could be anything of value. And with an agency relationship though, consideration is not a requirement. You can act as a gratuitous agent where you're still the agent, you have all the same liabilities and responsibilities, but you do not get paid. You do not get paid in any type of consideration, whether it be money and compensation or something else of value. You do not um, need to collect that. It's not an essential element to create that agency relationship. Uh, whereas remember, on a contract, consideration is required, but not for an agency relationship. So the best answer is B, an agreement to pay consideration. Three, a lease to a lessee is the same as a, A, sales agreement is to an equitable owner, B, trustee to the beneficiary, C, beneficiary to a mortgagor, D, all of the above are correct. Well, what is a lease to a lessee? So a lease, remember, is where the tenant has the ability to possess a property. They have that possession for a set period of time. Well, the tenant is called the lessee, so they're the ones with the possession, the ability to possess it. Now, of these three options, who has the ability to possess it here? 
Well, let's see, a sales agreement is to an equitable owner. Sales agreement is just another name for like a land contract. Um, and so you'll see those most commonly with CalVet, where you have the vendor and the vendee, and they have equitable title. An equitable title, so that equitable owner, is the one that is just having possession. They still don't have the legal um, title yet. They would it once they pay off the entire debt, but at this point, they only have possession. So A looks to be the best answer so far. B, trustee to the beneficiary. No, remember, trustee is that disinterested third party that assists and has the power of sale if the trustor defaults on their payment so the beneficiary can then collect um, the property and the, the, the money from the property. C, beneficiary to a mortgagor. No, remember, beneficiary is the lender to a mortgagor. That is to the as a buyer. But beneficiary deals with trustee. Mortgagor deals with mortgages. So you wouldn't even see those two together. Because remember, the mortgagor gets the mortgage from a mortgagee. So the best answer would be A, sales agreement is to an equitable owner. Four, replacement costs would use all of the following except A, cost of improvements to the land, B, allowances for depreciation, C, a separate estimate of the value of the land, D, capitalization rate. So we have to understand the question here. What is replacement cost? Well, replacement cost is a part of the cost approach within appraisal. So on that cost approach, remember they value the land using the market data approach. So they do a separate valuation of the land. They then value the improvements of the proper of the improvements to the land um, and the cost of those improvements of what it would be. And then they will also at that point depreciate the um, the property to its current condition. So they take into consideration physical deterioration, functional obsolescence, and economic obsolescence. So with that, we know for the cost approach. We look at the value of the land, we look at the value of the improvements, the cost of the improvements, um, because it's a cost approach, as well as um, the depreciation. So A, B, and C are all things that would be taken into consideration when using the replacement cost. But the capitalization rate is not. Capitalization rate would be dealt with the income approach. So D would be the correct answer. And remember, with replacement cost, we're looking at um, the cost of the improvements with the same utility. We're not creating an exact replica. That would be reproduction cost of the um, if we we're looking at the improvements underneath the cost approach. So D is the best answer. Five, can an unlicensed, unlicensed person sell a property and collect a commission? A, yes, if he or she is acting as an attorney in fact. B, Yes, as long as the commission is equal to the amount of money needed to cover expenses that were only sale related. C, yes, as long as the unlicensed person is enrolled in a real estate course. D, yes, as long as it is commercial property. Well, out of the answer options, it has to be at least one of them has to be correct. But what is the reason where an unlicensed person can sell property and collect a commission? It's very, very, very rare that an unlicensed person could collect a commission, but there is one circumstance for it. So I'm going to start from the bottom and work our way up here. Yes, as long as it is a commercial property. It does not matter what the type of property is. You have to have a real estate license to sell any type of property, whether it be commercial, residential, industrial, etc. If you're collecting a commission and selling a property on behalf of someone else and creating that agency relationship, you have to be licensed. It uh, doesn't matter what type of property. Then yes, as long as the unlicensed person is enrolled in a real estate course. We don't care that you're on the path to get your real estate license. You have to have that license in hand. B, yes, as long as the commission is equal to the amount of money needed to cover expenses that were only sale related. No, we don't care that, yes, you weren't really making any profit on it. You were just being reimbursed for it. No, you have to have a real estate license. And remember, with an agency relationship, consideration is not a requirement. So that is not something that is required. But yes, so with process of elimination, A looks to be the best answer. But why is that? If he or she is acting as an attorney, in fact. So if that unlicensed person is actually acting on behalf of the, of the principal with the power of attorney. So not just being a real estate, acting like a real estate agent and having that agency relationship. 
they can sell a property and collect a commission if they're acting as an attorney in fact where there's that power of attorney established where they can actually sign on behalf of another person because of that they're acting as another person they're able to they have the power to do so so they are able to sell the property and collect some um, a commission off of that so the best answer is yay is a yes if he or she is acting as an attorney in fact Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful in your licensing journey and your studies. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel so we keep producing new content. But if you have any questions or if you'd like to check us out for completing coursework to be eligible to take the state exam or even for preparation to help you prepare for the state test, we have tons of options and I have our website listed below. Otherwise, I'm Skylar with Accredited Real Estate Schools and thanks for watching.